Good morning, and how are you on this nice rainy day in June? I want to welcome you to the Cannon County Chamber Connection Show. And of course, as usual, this is made possible by DTC Communications. And they're always a great partner for the Chamber and a lot of other places in Cannon County, too. My name is Carolyn Motley, and I'm with the Chamber. And my co-host is Keith Reedy, and he's with the Courier and the Chamber. And, um, you know, it seems like COVID cases are going down a little bit, and events are opening up, and I do mean opening up. So if there's anybody out there that needs to get vaccinated, the health department is, is open, and you can go in at any time. Don't have to have a, an appointment. We have several people with us today, as you can see, and one of the big events coming up for the year is always the Lions Club uh, One Night ho Walk and Horse Show, and that will be on July 3rd this time. That's the first Saturday in July, and we've got a whole group here that want to talk to you about that. Keith, do you have anything to say opening up? I'm not part of that group, but that's <laughs> fine. No, nothing opening up. But I did wear my DTC communications hat. I see that hat. you did, and it's a good thing. And where did we get this? We got this at the car show, which we'll you talk about a little bit later. You got that at the cruising. Yeah, well, the cruising. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> we got to be All particular, right. but yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, we have with us um, Travis Maddox. And Travis, <coughs> you are the president of the Lions Club at this time, are you not? At this time, yes. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, that rotates yes, every year, does. so it's not like you're going to be fired. This is our upcoming president. And Mr. Greg Wessel. And, of course, he, he doesn't want to be mentioned right now, but Bruce Steelman <laughs> is at the other end of the table. And Bruce has been a big part of this whole show for as long as I can remember, and probably as long as he can remember. <laughs> so. Yeah, since I've been here in Cannon County back in 1997, I believe. Okay, I knew it had been a while. And we're going to talk about that today, and I'm going to start out with you, Greg. Um, how many times have you done this horse show? You're fairly new to the Lions Club. Relatively new to this Lions Club and certainly to this area. Um, this is, we've been here three years come August, so we, we helped out uh, a year or two before we were actually moving here. Our I daughter, remember. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Dr. Trey Wessel, and, and uh, of course she's been a Lions Club member for a lot, a lot of years here. Uh, I've been members of, I've been a member of other Lions clubs, where we were when I retired. We moved down here and been part of this this club since then. And and uh, uh, as I say, we helped out with with the uh, horse show even before we moved down here. So um, we've been around horses all our lives. Not not the, this kind of show horses, but um, we enjoyed the horses and, and the people around the horses. Uh, Where did you move here from, Greg? Central Illinois. We were in a little town uh, just west of Peoria. And uh, so Central Illinois, and that uh, um, it, it's corn and beans and corn and beans and corn and beans. What up, kind uh, of horses do they enjoy up there? Mostly quarter horses. Okay, I was going to say, I yeah. come from Colorado, and it's quarter horse country, yeah, so. Yeah. Mostly yeah. quarter horses there, so. <clears throat> um, we've had horses since we were children, so we've been around horses all of our lives, both me and my wife, so. Uh, kids grew up rodeoing and um, went all, all the way through to son, actually, even rodeoed scholarships in, in uh, college, so. Rodeos are a little Tennessee. different from the horse show, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it certainly is. But, uh, uh, so we've all, the whole family's been involved around horses and different activities with horses for most of our lives. Well, this is a big event, and there's people that help in this event that aren't even Lions Club members. Yeah. <laughs> I think they pull the whole town in on this, you know, and some people that are out of town. But um, just like with you, your daughter was in here, so you came down and helped. And Travis, 
Uh, you are new to the Lions Club, fairly new to the Lions Club. Yes. And you moved in here from where? I moved in here from Murfreesboro. Okay. Did you have any horses? I've never been on a horse, but one time <laughs> in my entire life, I don't know anything about horses. And I'll give you a really good example. When me and my wife got married, she, her daughter had a horse that was out at her grandparents, and I didn't think she was feeding this horse enough. So I went out of the bar and I found some sweet feed, so I fed it a bucket of sweet feed. But the oh, horse really liked that, so I'm I went sure. and got another bucket that <laughs> liked know. that one too. So I gave another bucket. About scared them to death, they thought I had foundered this horse. Well, I thought you would. Didn't know what a foundering a horse was, but uh, you know, I've been involved with the horse show for well, I guess the last uh, three years, and it's. Uh, I'm relatively new to Canada. Can I didn't know we even had a horse show till I joined the Lions Club. Right. And uh, I don't know. Well, really this know. is one of their biggest fundraisers, it, if it, not the biggest, it, right? It's the biggest yes, fundraiser yes. to yes. Su that support. Without the horse show, the Lions Club don't accomplish just a whole lot because we don't have enough money. And uh, the Well, we help a lot of charities. The Lions Club helps a lot of charities. So It, it, it really does. You know, uh, it really supports a lot. Of, it was founded basically to help the blind. Mm -hmm. And I have a son that is is blind, and uh, he went to the school for the blind. And I know we would do some work with the school for the blind. We did. And it's an incredible place. And uh, I have really enjoyed working with the Lions Club and with the horse show. And I learn a lot about horses and stuff. I don't. I, I still don't know nearly as much as a lot of people, people like Bruce does that's been where, around all the time. Where do they put you? What is your uh, job well, at the Well, I have, I have helped Tria with the, uh, with the concessions, and last year I was uh, helping there where they were taking the temperatures and all this kind of stuff and handing out the, the brochures and stuff. I think this year I'm going to help with the parking. <laughs> and I mean, I'm getting educated on all of it, I think. And uh, I, but I have really enjoyed. There's a great group of people in the Lions Club. It's a really a great. <laughs> they work hard for that. And they it, do. it is a really hard job. You know, last year because we didn't have a lot of extra help that we usually uh, depend on. You know, we were there till <coughs> like two o'clock in the morning. That's yeah. not unusual, Cleaning is up it? And stuff. No. <laughs> but after, after you've been there since nine o'clock that morning, it, I know and you're picking up chairs at two o'clock <laughs> in the morning and loading them in a truck. And uh, Greg, Greg was there, and Trio was there driving the truck. And <laughs> it's, everybody puts a lot of effort into it. They and do. It's, it's a great asset. It's one of the, the top-rated uh one night horse shows in the United States. How many awards have you won, oh, Bruce, for that? We've over? got a trophy case full of awards that we won in the past. And, and, and it is, it is probably, it is one of the largest uh, one night shows and uh, we can't uh, tell you all the testimonials we have from people that comes to Woodbury that one night that just brags and brags on Woodbury and as you know the host of that one night show and how much they appreciate coming to Woodbury they they one of those things that they put on their to-do list every day every year and they come uh, repeat uh, uh, participants of the Woodbury Lions Club Horse Show. This kind of coincides somewhat with the ones in Shelbyville too mm -hmm. because and, you get a lot of participants from out there to that too don't you? Yeah, and you know that leading up to the celebration uh, shows such as Woodbury uh, they put a lot of emphasis on doing well at those shows because mm -hmm. it leads up to, you know, it's a prestige kind of thing that leads up to the celebration. And uh, it, it's a very prestigious uh, uh, thing to, to win uh, their, uh, their class of Woodbury. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons that we have such good participation uh, first off is, you know, we've been doing it so many years. We know how to put on horse show. And secondly, it's just uh, the Woodbury Lions Club horse show is a prestigious show that people just wants to come to Woodbury. Travis mentioned the uh, concession stand. And I've got to say, uh, that's a tour of duty if you've worked <laughs> in that because that's hard work. But as well as the show winning awards, 
the one thing I hear if anyone calls is, are they going to have those country ham sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> that, and I think last year you had the ice cream, purity ice we cream. We have ice cream every year. Oh, well, you have it year, yearly, but people ask I do. about that, they too. Do. And probably the thing to really mention, drive home this, for this year, uh, you know, last year, because of COVID, we had to have food trucks. Right. But we didn't. We didn't have any options because we wanted to be as safe as possible. And, and we went every opportunity. We had screenings. Right. We had barriers. Uh, uh, we, we, we really worked hard from, from the safety side of it. But this year, with the vaccinations and the, and, and, and the numbers dropping, we are going to have concession stands yep. this year. I heard and that. I think that's a very important thing. Yeah, that yeah I think so too. And remember. they have a dessert tent. And the other thing about that is they're homemade dessert. And uh, I remember one year, uh, I've always worked in that since they started that back, but uh, a lady brought a banana pudding and she sat it there on a table where the dessert tent was. And I thought, now how am I going to serve this? <laughs> because everything is individually wrapped and everything. Well, the only thing I could think of was to put it in styrofoam cups and just sell it so much a cup. Everybody was so pleased with it until the guys in the concession stand came over and asked where their banana pudding was. And the wives had made it for them. Oh, no. And so I, I, thought, I thought, well, I, I sold out of that a long time ago. <laughs> wow. But, yeah, but, but yeah. you got to have a little fun in there. They were pretty good natured about it, <laughs> sort of. But anyway, we also have homemade fried pies. Mm -hmm. And when word gets around, Mm -hmm. that we have those, they will come by a box full of them. If you, <laughs> I think we go through like 150 at that show that night because once the word gets out, you not only have the horse show people, you also have the trainers, and you have the people out taking care of the horses in the trailers and everything, and they all come in for that, so. And Carolyn, also something have else we need to really mention is that it is a community show. It is. Uh, I told you everybody in the community works in it. Yeah, and, and, we, and, and we couldn't <laughs> do it without the participation and assistance of, of all the folks that comes out. We have a lot of volunteers that comes out, uh, the uh, trustees at the uh, Cannon County uh, uh, Jail. Right. Uh, are, are a valuable help. Uh, the uh, uh, you know Kenny County, County Sheriff Department. We have the Woodbury Police that helps uh, as far as traffic. Um, the rescue squad. The rescue, oh, the rescue squad, squad will be there. On, on helping on, on some of just the, the mechanics of making it happen. And they're right there. And DTC <laughs> is there. They uh, take they the do. show and they've been doing it for a number of years. Uh, it, it, you know, and, and, and one thing that we want to do this year is invite folks that if you've never come to a horse show, come out and, 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 and sit through some of the show. Uh, it, it's pretty electrifying. And if you've been cooped up, as many of us have been for the last year, uh, it would be a very welcoming uh, event to come out and be very entertaining to come out and see some of the excitement at the Woodbury Life Club Horse Show. Well, if you like horses, I don't care what kind of horses you like, um, this is part of it. You know, the walking horse is part of it. There's a lot of other different kind of horses. And like I say, it doesn't, uh, it's not a rodeo. <laughs> Well, unless you go back in the holding <laughs> pen and yeah. maybe. Uh, but anyway, it's a good show. And a lot of people just like to come out and visit and watch the horses and yell at them as they go by and everything. That would always scare me. But you have some specialty classes too, do you not? Yeah. And uh, this year, uh, we started it uh, with, uh, two or three years ago. Uh, it's a it's a, it's the fast uh, fast racking class. 
-hmm. And you know that's that's a horse on steroids, and it just it's amazing. Don't how mention that. Don't know, but, <laughs> no. but, just super fast. But don't it, go there. It's a it's a he did very not say steroids. He did not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a horse that is very energetic. It's just that natural gait. And I guarantee if you come and watch that uh, fast ranking class, you, you'll be hooked on it because we were hooked after we had it for the first time a couple of years ago. And it, it is a, it's a neat class to sit there and watch. You just can't imagine a, uh, uh, a horse can take a small step like this racking horse, uh, like rack horse gate is how fast they can grow across that around that run it run. It is amazing to watch. I have to say one of my favorite classes is the one with the kids. You know, is it the stick horse? Yeah. yeah they I actually thought, race yeah, with the that, little kids, and, you know, that is and when they had the little 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 colts out there, <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought Oh, I love them. Uh, yes. The horses are really beautiful animals. I mean, they they are. Are, they re I mean I really don't understand a lot about walking horses, but I know there's they are some beautiful animals and Vince, he's had to throw the word steroid in there. Yeah. Well, let's say these yeah. horses are checked and let's checked. Let's say caffeine. Yeah. They are. Yeah. You know, these <laughs> racking horses are like they're just like we are when we they have too much caffeine. Before, right? yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. <laughs> but yeah, we we are affiliated with the show, and uh, we have DQPs there that uh, check every horse coming in, and the, the horses that win, they're checked the, the second time when they come out. Uh, they do a superb job in making sure that everybody is following the rules and, and the horse horses are uh, kept on, uh, you know, at the utmost. Oh, you ought to see the rules. trailers they're in. They're better than some Yeah, they live a lot better. Like some people. People. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these horses, yeah, they are. They, they have they, air conditioning. <laughs> um, I will say this, the Colts, golly, everybody goes, well, look, there isn't one that I would throw out. I mean, really, if I could have any of them, I'd take them all. I don't have a place for them, but I would. They're that pretty, and I love them. I love to watch them. I think they're, um, they're a beautiful horse, but then I think that about all horses. So uh, this is a good thing, but we want everybody to come out and enjoy that. The price of admission is barely anything, really, for a full night of enjoyment. Uh, what is it, six dollars now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, I believe it is six dollars. I believe it's six dollars, though. So. And you can't beat that to go anywhere anymore. You can't even go to a movie for that. It's so. worth that to get in to get a fi get a fried pie. Well, mm. it is. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to pay for those. Those are free. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and the country, the the country ham sandwiches. I yes. mean, it, you come and, and treat yourself and, and some some really good. Uh, entertainment that's really a Tennessee tradition, the uh, Tennessee walking horse. Make it a family outing and bring the kids. Well, the kids love it. Mm -hmm. If for no other reason to come up there and eat, mm -hmm. you know, they love it. I had one little girl, um, she, she was about maybe five, and she used to want to argue with me about her change. <laughs> like sometimes she didn't even have enough money. So I would just pitch in whatever, and then she would stand there and she says, my Nana wants change. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought your Nana didn't give you enough money. <laughs> so finally, about the third time, I told her, I says, you go tell your Nana to come here, please. <laughs> Well, but they, Marilyn, I, I wanted to add one thing in here that we haven't touched on yet, but um, about the show, we've had a lot of people out around the community, and we've had just tons of people who support this program by sponsor, taking up sponsorships in the program. That's true. And we need to thank the, those people also that have, have uh, put in uh, to sponsored the, the program to keep it going and it, it's a big part of how we're able to put the program on and, and uh, well it's it, not it's, cheap to put on a program like this yeah well yeah. bruce has done a, a, such a good job of getting quality people in for all the different parts that, that you need uh, a judge that's known and, and a, a ringmaster that knows what they're doing and, and people there to 
to make the thing go along and keep it moving so there's not a lot of dead time in between classes and that sort of thing. So it just takes the whole community. Is that a new class sheet? No, it's a new class sheet, yes. I just wondered how many classes we have. Well, right now it looks like we'll have 40 classes. 40. Oh. And, and one thing we haven't mentioned, that we start at 5 o'clock. Right. And uh, and a drive home, what Greg was saying, that, you know, the, the program, yeah, I mean, that's another example of the community involvement, so the community support of the show. It is. We, and, and we have people that come to this and bring horses from other states. We have people from over, Florida. There were people from California, East California New York, New York and, uh, all over California. Yeah. Now they come to Woodbury yeah. well, to I had, show their I, horse. I've already had, I, was, I had an email from a California person this morning asking about the, the uh, class sheet and uh, You'll be shocked on the, uh, uh, the thing that I'm always shocked on is the, the dress. I mean, the, the, the horse uh, clientele, the, the enthusiasts, horse en en enthusiasts, they really get dolled up yeah. when, they, when, they, when, when they come out to the show. And also the tailgating is pretty impressive right. for the show as well. Yeah. I always wanted one of those riding habits. I don't remember one of my horse, but I wanted one of those. I was, thought they was pretty cool. <laughs> but one thing I'd like to mention, too, is this is a, the Lion Club sponsors this, but anybody in this community is more than welcome to volunteer to help. If you'd just like to be involved <laughs> yes. in it, you know, and help out, it's just a way, you know, I know a lot of uh, school kids and stuff, they need uh, volunteer hours. That would be a really great way for them to get them. Well, you need parking, and gatekeepers, park food people. Um, there's several gates uh, that need to be taken care of. The horses that come into the arena and everything, you know, yes. you've got... There's, we'll find something for you to do. Yeah. And the community has always been gung-ho with just about everything. And, uh, you know, last year was a little difficult because everything was so shut down, but right. it went off without a hitch. And I think we had a really successful one considering everything that was going on. And I think this year's gonna be even better. This is gonna be, I believe this is gonna be one of the best ones we've ever had because people are so ready to get out and they do are. something. Yeah, and, and it was a hard decision for us when we when we were trying to decide whether or not we'd even have a show last year because of COVID. But, you know, a lot of us felt like it was something that was, that, that had a tremendous heritage to Cannon County uh, that we felt like we could do it safely, and we did. And, uh, you know, the Woodbury Lion School Horse Show, it's been going on for 80 years continuously and you know, that says a whole lot yeah it is most people don't live that long yeah. <laughs> and people don't realize all the people that are you know people that take care of the track you know bruce we have a great Eric. facility we have a covered arena that works out great for the horses that are getting ready to come out and show we have a great arena yeah yeah, we got to, we've we, got we box seats. We definitely need to thank the city and county officials, government officials, for their support as well. That that goes a long way. And the box seats, if you're interested in box seats, all you have to do is give uh, Miss uh, one of the Lions Club members or uh, Lois Lammer a call, and we'll fix you up with a ringside seat. And they are to the show. And they even do. They even have chairs set up have in chairs. it, don't they? Yeah, they do. That was the one that we were in the middle. We were still there at two o'clock in the morning we're putting up, up last year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were. Well, guys, I think we've covered about everything on the horse show, except uh, this is open to the public too. <laughs> it's not just people that work there. It's the people that want to come enjoy it and their families, because it is good enjoyment. And it won't be on the same night as the fireworks, so that's a plus. <laughs> it was last year, wasn't it? Fireworks, and yeah, we were kind of- concerned about that last year. Yeah, but it, it didn't horses. have Horses and effect. the fireworks yeah. don't go together, but- It didn't um, have an effect at all. But these horses, I mean, they're athletes. I mean, that, that's, right. that's the best description. They're beautiful. Uh, they, they, they have a tremendous, natural gait, and uh, I mean, they are true athletes for what they do. And you know, you were talking about 
uh, the racking part of Speed the cargo. We had a walking horse, um, a mare, and she was quite large. Uh, we didn't show her as a walking horse or anything. She threw some great colts. But <clears throat> my son went through town on her for the Cannon County Walking Horse Association trail ride. He was already <laughs> he was already over the bridge and onto the road. The rest of them were just coming through town. She had a gate on her that would set you back, and you just sat there. You just She'd sat do there the rest. And you were amazed with her, her natural beauty. I, I think. The uh, uh, speed wrecking class. Uh, that is going to be class 36, and, and, and any class we have is worth the price of the admission. But I guarantee you if, you, if you come to class 36 to open speed ranking, you will be amazed that, that the, the ability of these horses have. Do we have a uh, buggy class anymore? Yeah, we still have the uh, the um, uh, the buggy class, the the, the, the pleasure type. Event. Right. We still have. Uh, Jeff Gibbons, which was a long time friend of Woodbury Lions Club, he was a, a trainer in, in in Murfreesboro. He introduced us to that uh, uh, buggy driving class. And we've kept it in because it's it, it's. I always enjoyed it goes, that. Yeah, I think it goes that's back great. to sort of the the old style of right. what we used it's to. The and I guess it shows the uh, 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 how diversible uh, these walking horses are, whether it's flat shot or whether it's uh, uh, buggy or whether it's trail riding or whether, you know, uh, on the older horses where you see have this uh, 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 where they do the natural canter. Uh, that's pretty darn amazing as well. Yeah, it, it is. It's, they're all, it, 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 it's a very enjoyable night. Uh, I, you know, I can't stress enough to, to, to come out and, and be a part of the tradition we have in Kenny County for the horse show. And that will be on Saturday, July 3rd. And get there early. The gates open at 5. <laughs> but you want to be able to park. And, of course, they have people in the parking that will help you. If you go away hungry, it's your own fault. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Can say You're not going to go away go, it's, it's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. It will. It will. I'm looking forward to getting out and getting back to normal, normalcy. Was it? Me too. Me too. Um, anything else, guys, going on at the Lions Club? Everybody's working on this horse show. Yeah, right? this is a <laughs> big project for the year. And and it takes precedence over just about everything else we do at this point in time. We've got a lot of other projects throughout the year, but uh, these couple months ahead of time, uh, you're actually getting the show up, up and going. Uh, is, uh, well, this is horse country. Mm -hmm. Whether it be spotted horses or uh, probably the quarter horse isn't as popular down here mm -hmm. as it was where I came from. Yeah. But they've never seen a quarter horse work, have they? <laughs> yeah. If you don't believe it's a horse country, just watch. come out to my house, sit in the front yard on Short Mountain Road, <laughs> and there's just a stream yes. of horse trailers going up and down, up and down. And we uh, have, what, two rides a year? <coughs> yeah. Of the city, of, of, of not only people in Canyon County, but all around the Yeah, they the, come uh, for those, too. Uh, we have the uh, <coughs> mule skinners here in Canyon County that started here in Kenny County, right. that, that uh, they have their wagon trains uh, several times a year to have a mule, sh uh, mule show, and, and they do a, a lot of work for the Columbia Mule Show. Well, they're going to have a mule day up at the distillery on June 12th. Yeah. So with this, this is horse country. Yeah, it You're is. You're exactly right. It is. All right, we're going to give you your turn now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we have Sarah Farrell, and she is in the extension office along with Bruce. <clears throat> and she is over the, she is the 4-H agent for Cannon County Schools. Yes, yeah, so it's good to be here. And um, 
So we have been very blessed in Cannon County to still have been in the schools, been working with the school system um, safely throughout the entire year, and just finished up, um, of course, the school year. And we went out with a bang. We were really excited to have um, traveling farm day. We didn't have them all come together, but that actually worked out pretty well this year because last year we did not have farm day at all. And so we ended up having um, the fifth graders come out and had fourth and fifth graders for a traveling farm day so um, so with with Farm Bureau and co-op and UT extension uh, we pulled together a lot of farmers and volunteers and just a lot of help from all across the county um, and we traveled to all of the schools um, and had six different farm days <laughs> instead of just one. So, but the schools really liked it. It seemed, um, we were actually talking that it ended up working out really well to have uh, farmers that typically we were not able to have um, otherwise because they would not be able to bring their large farm equipment and participate right. in the middle of Woodbury um, coming <laughs> from other parts of the county and so we really appreciate that and it made me think of it because we ended up having um, in the mail we received yesterday some thank you cards and things that the kids had sent from some of the schools yesterday well, and so they were really appreciative <laughs> they were really excited but we had a lot of different animals and stops and farm equipment and and we appreciate all of our sponsors and our volunteers to help out with that and uh, we had 4-H'ers that were there with their animals and 4-H Honor Club members that were there leading some of the stops as well. But upcoming events, of course, we're going to have um, different animal shows. So we'll have horse shows, we'll have um, cattle shows, both beef and dairy. Now, is we'll that have, during the summer? It is, yes. So we'll have those <laughs> during the summer. Um, the horse show will be at the very beginning of, of June, and um, we'll have the um, goat show, lamb shows, so we'll have all of those going on uh, this summer. And we'll also, instead of having our traditional overnight shows or overnight camps, you know, those decisions had to be made before we knew about vaccines and how, how things were going to be opened back up. So um, those decisions had to be made months ago. Um, so instead of overnight camps, we're doing day camps this summer. And our um, day camp uh, is actually in Woodbury, uh, the traveling roadshow camp. And um, so we're excited to have, you know, kids for that as well, that um, where Crossville will actually be coming to Woodbury and right. implementing that. <laughs> but we also have um, the, we have kids signed up for every camp this year. So we have 4 um, hers that are signed up for our culinary camp that will be held um, later in July. And that is is both at Tennessee Tech and uh, in Murfreesboro and they're actually going to learn how to um, cook Italian food so um, I'm, I'm really good at learning to eat Italian food I'm not sure about learning to cook it I don't, but need to learn. <laughs> I don't know how to I don't have to learn how to eat it but the um, the other camps is 4-H electric camp and we appreciate um, all of the sponsorships that go into these these camps as well especially for 4-H electric camp Middle Tennessee electric here um, sponsors those camps so we do have a Forager that'll be attending this, and this is an exciting camp that we have for um, just to focus on a specific 4-H project. Out of the 27 4-H projects that we have, um, they have one camp that focuses just on the electric camp, and it has everything from <clears throat> flying drones to building and um, working robots. And then they'll actually be working about um, electromagnetism and building their own electric motor. Um, they also typically race um, 
go-karts and things like that. But this will also be a traveling across the state day camp. Um, and that is the electric camp that they'll have. So we have a 4 h attending that as well. And, and then the last one um, is an overnight camp. So this is the only overnight camp that they will be offering, and there are still spots available for this. And it will be July the 6th through the 9th. And the cost for that is 175, and but that is a three-day full of creek stomping and axe throwing, campfires. It's it will be very rustic. It is in the middle of Warren County, so it's um, urban college area, which is Camp Woodley. It's called Pioneer Camp. So the reason that they're able to do this overnight is it's very limited on. Space. So they're actually separating into um, different cabins. And the reason I say it's rustic is, you know, in the middle of July, so it's not air conditioned. So that's why they consider it rustic. But it is very shaded, so it stays pretty cool there. Um, but a lot of different fun activities, kayaking, um, campfire cooking. So they'll be learning how to cook outside and things like that. So if you're interested, that is um, open to grade 7 through 10. Um, for those camps as well. And I am excited to announce that the other um, the other adventure that we have is academic conference and that um, 4-Hers have to apply for that. It's not something that they can actually pay to attend. They have to put in application process, which is a long process. And they end up um, when they apply for that, it has to be in a specific project that they have activities and events that they've participated in. And we have four, we have um, two different days that they'll be attending that. One is at Tennessee Tech and the other one will be um, in Murfreesboro. And so we do have two girls that will be attending that and so we're really proud of those two. So you already have the applicants. We do have those go. applicants so we're really proud that they'll be going and okay. and participating and so we're excited to to report on how they do there. Um, I'll be working those events as well and so they're excited to participate in that as well but we we also have a 4-H'er. -er. Um, one of those is Danica Hughes. Um, the other one is Elena House um, but but Elena went to Woodbury or goes to Woodbury Grammar School and Danica went to Auburn eighth grade. But Danica also designed this 4-H t-shirt that I have in the front. And every year we do a poster contest. And every year the winning poster contest becomes our next t-shirt design. But this year the the state decided to not just do a a traditional poster they also did a digital poster design so we were able to submit three traditional posters and three digital posters and out of those so we had six winning posters from Cannon County and out of those Danica won at the state level right. so out of 10 state winners Danica was one of those state winners and this was her design a Beatles theme all you need is 4-H <laughs> uh, and we every time I see it I want to now sing all you need is love but we're really excited um, and proud of Danica and and she is actually one that is is attending many of the things that I have um, mentioned but just really active in 4-H as well um, oh, wow. all across the board but we're up and running all back at the office you know it's it's nice to just all be back together and it's been a weird and, year I'm yes sure. yes it's yeah. it's been great because the one time that we were all at the office one of us came down with covid <laughs> so we all had quarantine that's so not it, funny you know, we, we, we 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 were taught our lessons from that point on we tried to, to ration ourselves to be at the office in one or two at a time that's well, what understand. happened in the newspaper industry <laughs> i got it first and then all of a sudden everybody else got it mm -hmm. yeah. kind of had to yeah. you know. so, so we so we learned our lesson and, and from that point on that we, we we were better bruce there's one other question i got to ask you before i go on to the events 
and that is farmer's market. Yes, I get a call a day about the farmer's market. The, this year has been really difficult because uh, my phone started ringing early this morning on that very uh, subject on how odd the year's gone. You know, we had a, a, a wet spring, we had a cool spring. Yes, we did. Uh, we had frost late, <laughs> uh, which at that point set everything back. Uh, you know, it put us it really it puts us back on, on at zero on trying to get our gardens and our vegetables right. and things going again. Uh, so we're a little behind schedule than we typically would be. Uh, I would give us a couple of weeks, okay. and, and 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 we'll know for certain. Uh, we are going to have a, um, a person that, that's selling custom meat. Uh, that's going to be setting up some. On, uh, on their Saturday mornings doing some uh, some of his meat products. Um, uh, just keep an eye out, uh, you know, here on, uh, at the Well, DPC. you will have it on the radio and in the paper, and right? on the radio and the newspaper. And let and, me know. And if you have any questions, <laughs> you know, just give us a call to Extension Office. And more, uh, most importantly, if, if you would like to be a vendor, uh, to, to sell either vegetables or eggs or you know anything agricultural. Fried pies. Uh, yeah, fried <laughs> pies. That's, that's There's some real good ones down there. Freshly fried <laughs> pies. There are. Uh, give us a call at Extension Office at 563-2554. Um, that will get you a, 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 a grower's permit and get you set up that you can uh, attend the uh, Saturday mornings at the farmer's market. It's every Saturday morning when, when we get kicked off, uh, kick, uh, when we start the market. Uh, we normally go, I uh, start at 7 o'clock in the morning, we're, we're, we're done by noon. Uh, if you're looking for something in particular, especially when we first start, uh, it's the, the old adage of the early bird gets the worm, is very, and it goes right along with the farmer's market. Uh, the, the red ripe tomatoes, the okra, some of the green beans, that kind of stuff, uh, it sells out early. So. Uh, uh, even though it's a Saturday morning uh, Tomatoes. and a lot of us like to sleep late, <laughs> you know, come on out to Farmer's Market and, and get why the, why the get in is good. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's at the Art Center in at the parking lot. Art Center lot. here in Kenny County. We have a, uh, 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 a very good partnership with Art Center. And, and one thing, uh, I, I don't come in here enough, but uh, come and visit Art Center. Uh, there are some really n uh, some, uh, some this is crafty, like a hidden jewel. Some yes. crafty <laughs> people in Canyon oh, County. We do. Uh, well, I was walking around looking at Kay Curry's uh, uh, ceramic. Kay does a great job. It, 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 it's it's it, it's it's remarkable on how the creative and the skills people in Kenny County have the baskets. Um, you know, make it put it on your bucket list to come by the lots of pottery in Kenny County. And we don't, and some of them are a little outside of Cannon County that bring their uh, their items here. But you won't find any tables of socks or anything from anywhere else. These are artisans. It's not flea market. <laughs> no, it this, isn't. It's but we have a great flea market. But this isn't. This isn't. Not here at Tartan. Nope. All right, guys. <clears throat> You've been great guests. I didn't even have to prompt you. You all knew exactly what to say. I do want to mention one thing here. We have a display here today. We have a great little store that is connected with the Art Center, and it's called Short Mountain Cultures. And they have a little bit of everything in there, a lot of fermented products. They buy to try to buy local as much as they can, but they have a great sourdough bread and there's two or three different types of it. They also have honey, and these are just three. They have a store full of this stuff. And then they have this that's called um, pecan butter. And uh, of course, if you're gonna eat bread, you probably need some of that to go with it. But they have candy, they have flour, cornmeal, many fermented products, sauerkraut. So please pay them a visit. And right now they have some little peaches in there that I'm told are very good. So I'm just telling y'all, you need to show up, get you some good stuff there. So 
All right, we're going to go on to the events then. Um, is there anything any of you want to add to this that we haven't? No. Uh, so I'd like to ask Sarah, are these camps available to anybody you have to be in 4-H uh, to participate in? Um, so we have, <clears throat> excuse me, so as long as they're fourth grade and up. Okay. So we have, um, they're not necessarily in the public school, so we have homeschool. So as long as they're in the, the correct grades, yeah, you're then they can. Grade or up, you're in yes. 4-H. Mm -hmm. Yes, camp. absolutely. They have to be going to school, Travis, so no, you can't go. Right. <laughs> but we do need volunteers a lot of Yes, time. absolutely. So we, see what you got yourself oh, into. Yes. So we can sign you right up, Travis. <laughs> so fourth through twelfth graders. Okay, June 7th is going to be your first uh, junior summer conservatory at the Art Center, and it begins on June 7th. The second junior conservatory will begin on June 21st, and the senior conservatory begins July 12th. Now, there are still open spots in all of those, and I guarantee you, if your kids are looking to do something during the summer, this is a great opportunity, because those kids not only have a lot of fun, they learn a lot, and they get fed lunch. I think the school system supplies lunch for them. Uh, it's every day here at the Art Center, and if you want in more information, please call the Art Center at 615-563-2787, and they'll be glad to fill you in on all the details. June 12th will be Mule Day at Short Mountain Distillery. Uh, activities from 9 to 2 p.m., craft events from 9 to 4, and the restaurant will be open 11 to 8. And you may want to call them and make reservations if you're going up there to eat, and I'm sure they will have entertainment on that day also. June 12th, we have a, gro a store here, a market, that is going to be celebrating their 25th anniversary. Hard to believe, isn't it? And it is hard to believe I mean, that I've... a one-stop market has been in business for that long. Mm -hmm. Parsley's Market is located on John Bragg Highway. It's at the flashing yellow light with Bradeville Road right on the corner. And he is going to be serving free hot dogs, popcorn, drinks, and snow cones while they last. <laughs> Activities for the kids will be bouncy houses, great door prizes, and food. Uh, they have, they serve food there every day. Hot plate lunches. Yes. Right. Really and good. half it's for really years. Good. <laughs> and half for years. Mm -hmm. Plus they sell gas mm -hmm. and all of your convenience <clears throat> store products they'll have in there. So that's going to be on June 12th. And everyone's invited. June 26th <clears throat> will be the next cruise in, and it will be at the Art Center from 4 to 7 p.m. All cars and trucks are welcome. DTC will be there with shirts and caps. Uh, shelter Insurance will be there, and they may be cooking hot dogs this next yeah. time. I'm not sure. O'Reilly's will supply the door prizes. The Moonlight Drive-In will have tickets available for the cruisers if you register your vehicle. And of course, there will be a Cruiser of the Month Award, and this year, this month it'll be sponsored by Shelter Insurance. Uh, July 3rd, the Woodbury Lions Club, one night walking horse show will be at the Horse Show Arena in Woodbury. Enjoy walking horse specialty classes famous ham sandwiches, I'm telling you. That's mm -hmm. what people call about. Yeah, homemade. Clayton, Clayton Glenn's Champions Arena. That's right. And homemade fried pies, ice cream, and desserts. And then the 4th of July, there will be a fireworks show. It will be at Dillon Park, but you can park in the, around the courthouse or anything and usually be able to see it very well there. And don't forget to visit the many antique stores 
the restaurants, the boutiques, coffee shop, jewelry store, furniture store, the Moonlight Drive-In, the flea market, and so much more in Cannon County and Woodbury. You can come here and spend the day and never run out of things to do. Keith, do you have anything that you have talked things. the whole time? Uh, yeah, I've talked the whole time. <laughs> we do want to say, send a special shout out to the Arts Center of Cannon County for allowing us to uh, do our cruise ins here. Yes, and, I mean, we do. We great, do appreciate it. It's a great place to host a cruise in, and uh, we found that out last month. Or, well, I guess it was last month, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> and uh, had a great time. A lot of people came out. Hope to see everybody out June the 26th. We'll, we'll keep you entertained with all the music and my smart Ellick comments and everything. Um, one other thing that I did want to mention, Cannon County High School football, and they have, they've really, uh, they're really excited about being able to have a summer program this year. COVID took care of that last year and uh, being able to get back into the sink of things. They've actually got some pretty good events coming up and one of them is going to be on June the 18th. It's going to be, I believe, at the, uh, let's see what it says, it doesn't even say. I'm going to say it's going to be at uh, Kenny County High School at the Fred Schwartz Field. It's got to be. They're doing an NFL punt, pass, and kick competition for all kids ages 5 to 12 interested in football. And this is going to be from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. on June the 18th. That'll be a Friday night. It's a free community event. Everybody can come out. And why do you want to come out? Because one of the special guests that's going to be there is Ryan Suckup. And if you have ever followed Tennessee Titans, he was a former kicker for the Titans, so he got injured and got released. And then he said, okay, I'm going to show you. And he went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's got a Super Bowl ring on his finger now as a result. <laughs> so he's going to be out there and uh, – and they were really excited about that. And uh, the middle grades uh, football team, high school football team, they even took over the youth program this year. So uh, it, it's on the up and up. And there's real, a lot of enthusiasm this early. Teams are starting to hold their tryouts. The volleyball team, basketball teams are holding their tryouts. So getting everything back into the swing of things, trying to get a Sports are season. back. That's right. Sports are back. Thank goodness. <laughs> Ms. Carolyn, when did you say Parsley's was having their the 12th? Uh, the 12th. And uh, one thing we said, hot plate, uh, hot plate lunches, but they also have a big selection of b biscuit, mm -hmm. uh, biscuit breakfast sandwiches as well. Yeah. Well, they serve breakfast, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but they, breakfast and, and, and the hot lunch. box, they have this uh, all kinds of chicken biscuit. So you can grab it biscuit. and go. Yeah. yeah. So they don't say you can't eat and drive. They just say you can't be on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I haven't heard anything about. Maybe you, you might know. Maybe you've heard from Mr. Vance. Uh, is there going to be a free fishing day this year offered in Kane oh, County? Well, I don't and know due to June COVID. The 12th. I haven't heard that, I know, but I will get in touch with him. I know in other and communities And we'll put it on are. Facebook. Yeah, and state, state's holding it. They're, they're going through with their free fishing day and marking it. Cookville's having a big free fishing day activity. That's hey, what, that's a big event a down here. Yeah. The kids love it. Well, the parents love mm -hmm. it too because the first one we had, I think the parents... The kids were there, but I think the parents were the ones <laughs> that were fishing. But they've kind of changed the rules on that so the kids can get in on it. But, yeah, that's a, that's a fun event. I love it. Okay, anything else, guys, before we call it a day? Yeah, I'd just kind of like to say thank you to all the people in Cannon County. This is the most giving, volunteering community Boy, that I, you got I that have right. ever, ever seen and, you know, the people of Cannon County really come together and do with just anything and everything. They follow everything, and I urge everybody to keep supporting the county, shopping here, and supporting all the events for everything that everybody does, put so much hard work into. You know, uh, every event that we have here in Cannon County benefits someone. Uh, it may not benefit all the people all the time, but especially anything we have around the square or out at the fairgrounds. People that come here for it, they're either going to buy food, they're going to shop, they'll buy gas. So everybody benefits from that. Plus, you're right, Travis, volunteer labor mm -hmm. is tremendous in Cannon County. And, and that goes from our fire departments, 
to our rescue squad. Most of these are volunteer people. Yeah, and, and, we, and you brought that up. Another one on the horse show, so we can do it without uh, volunteer fire department on water right. and ring and all that. I, mean, I knew when I started naming people off, I'd forget, but that's another class of going yeah. That's That's important, too. I know that. Yes. I know how that is, being a part of the horse show. So um, another thing that Bruce just showed me, there is a fishing rodeo that's going to be held in Canyon County at the East Fork so from 8 to 12 on June the 12th. So. Oh. Wow, we have a lot of stuff going on. June, June 12th, 12. yeah, get ready. <laughs> I hadn't seen our uh, wildlife person. The last time I seen him, he said that he had had surgery on his back and he hadn't been around much. I think it was his back. Mm -hmm. And I asked him if he got bit by a snake because he gets after me. <laughs> He gets after me because I want to kill all the snakes. <laughs> so I was just being smart. But anyway, we will have a fishing tournament, and it will be down along Stone River, uh, right off of Dillon Park. And if you look on the Chamber Facebook, I will get something on there about that. And we thank you for watching us, and we hope you learned something. And we want to see you at something in Cannon County. We don't care what it is, but the horse show would be a good one. So we'll see you next month.